All right, welcome back here to Calling the Audible, Division One, Division Two. Simon Dagenet to my left, Pizzi yes. to my more left, more left Le- of the left, left of the left. left. Uh, in my right field is uh, how we not take the back? None other than GM Clarathis, the Chipper Jones of the show, and uh, the Chuck Knoblock and Eagle, who's playing second base today. I don't like you so much. Oh, there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Must have been a good team. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> e- GM. <laughs> Chuck Knobloch couldn't throw the ball from second to first. Is that how Simon Dashney is on a five-yard out? Can't throw a five-yard out properly? What? what? It Why? was really a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I love making fun of, of Simon as much as the next guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> more than the next guy, let's be honest. <laughs> Chuck Knobloch over here. All right, boys, step into Div 1, Div 2. Matt Kirak will join us a bit later on. Uh, the yeah. week that was in week one, week two, uh, what caught your attention, gentlemen? Uh, how do you not start with Montreal's finest Braves, 34-33? Braves are supposed to be the next big thing, but Montreal it, it was chippy. So it was chippy. I was there so for that one. I'll pull the P's here and say I'm going to talk about this in my article, so I'll was, I was stand from saying too okay. much. I, I, I'll, I'll, but I'll the score, I'm happy with the score. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone from Braves spit in the mouth of anyone from uh, Montreal's Finest? You got chippy. What? You got chippy. That actually happened? Yeah. That's glorious. To a potential Hall of Famer. So. That's great. I'll tell well, the story. The, the Braves aren't spit the... Spit in somebody's <laughs> mouth? We'll okay. say the Braves aren't the first time... Offenders uh, allegedly did it during the Fall Cup as well. Well, they're they're chirpy, but they, they they have not been playing very well so far. Braves have been a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, I'd say so. season. And but to lose by one point is impressive to yeah. Montreal's finest. I, but is this one of the things where like it's close, it's close, it's close, and then each time they play Montreal's finest, just they their inv- the, their knowledge and their inventory yeah. uh, of plays will be like okay, now we know what they do. Th- that's what so finest does the best. But would, if you played finest. Mm-hmm. Piece of the Reese play finest and you lost by a point. Would you? I, oh, I would be yeah. over the moon, yeah. man. I would like. You know what? I don't care. I lost. It's a point. Like I'll take it. Yeah. You know what? For a team that, and it, it only hit me late in the second half. They held at Kenmore cashless for pretty much eighty percent of the game. Who was covering them? It was a. Uh, it was a uh, myriad of players. It wasn't anyone in particular? Okay, so they, just, they, they mixed it up. It was mixed it up, right? Um, it got chippy. Kareem Bennett and George Gatsby. At the end, they they were cool with each other, but. Uh, you know, that created a little bit of a crowd around those two. Mm-hmm. I thought Kevin Wyeth was okay. He missed a lot of throws. I, like, they were missing Pat Jerome. Didn't help. Not that Pat Jerome in there. But they have a lot of weapons. They have a lot of weapons. But I, I just felt like he just didn't get to the guys that he needs. So, Guillaume Ward is off. And, um, just he last went, week. But, but part, of, part of it, when you see Kevin Wyeth miss, it's never that Kevin Wyeth got worse. It's the defense he's playing is a high caliber defense. Yeah, yeah you know, th- it's and a the, good the throws defense. are tougher to make. It's not, it's not Kevin the problem. No, no, <laughs> but but the the reality is that you know, in a game like this where on paper you, you think Fire should win this game by two scores. Yep. And and you know, I don't th- think so. But you know what they they threw like like they threw a late first half to uh, INT which was on the last plate. So they So that doesn't matter. Yeah, like they were playing know how they do the Fire, right? The blueprint is that they use both timeouts in the first half to get that extra possession before the second half regardless if they get the ball or not, right? Yep. They got the ball back, but, but couldn't score, right? So it could have easily be up 27-20 at halftime. Maybe they went by two scores, and then we're like, wow, dominant performance, right? But I just thought that the clock management wasn't as efficient as it should have been, and well, maybe it cost them a few score. more points. Well, no, but you know how they use it, though, right? How many, how many plays did they get before halftime? Were you, they had, I believe, four plays before okay, halftime. Okay, well, that's, that's it. That's enough. The game two extra plays. But Fines are notorious for scoring three plays, right, and giving the team one more play to go. But, again, to me, that's more of a credit to Braves defense than yep. – and knocking much else. Four plays is enough. Yeah. For a bias, yes. No, for, for anybody. For four a, plays any is team enough. in FPF, four plays is enough. Three is very borderline tough, but four plays because is enough. Once if you get that if you get to midfield on your first play, you which three is three shots at the end zone. Three shots at the end zone, exactly. You should be able to score. Yep. I agree. Uh, like uh Maniacs like Monstars. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Listen, Maniacs Monstars, that's forty nine twenty eight victory. Coming into this game, I expected Monstars to make it an interception fest, and they did. Your boy, Rafa, did not have a good Fat game. Manziel. Rafa Belagat, Fat Manziel. Again, you can start Fat Manziel. learning to use I, I was, full I was names. waiting for him to use like his, his nickname because he, he used his own nickname to, mo- to refer to himself to Mokan, which I found glorious. <laughs> Who, why would you refer yourself to as <laughs> Fat Manziel? <laughs> I'm laughing at something else from GM. Anyways. Uh, See, I, 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 I refer to myself as Fat Kevin Smith. <laughs> 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 But I, I'm still I, I'm a bit I'm surprised that Maniacs were able to put up this many points regardless of the performance. They they scored 
He threw was, five picks. Yeah, it, he threw five picks from the first half, though. Like, he threw, <laughs> like, a like a duck ball Hail Mary that was caught, um, not by Jarvis Jim. Let's get the name quickly up here. And oh, anyway, the, the reaction from, from our boy Manziel James was... James Michael? Or James Michel, sorry? I think it was James Michel, yeah. So the reaction from, from our boy Manziel was, yeah, boy, that's Maniacs football right there, dog. That's how we do out here, bro. I'm like, yo, bro, it's one touchdown, bro. You're only up by 7 nothing, bro. Like, what's up with There's you? a lot of bros in two seconds. Yeah, I was, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was how many bros did you just say? I know say, we're bro? in St. Leonard, but still. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not surprised. Is there a worse matchup for Maniacs? Let's take the finest out of the equation, but is there a worse matchup in Division One for Maniacs than Monsters? D-Boys. D-Boys. But I, yeah, I, I, I see, close, for the monsters. Yeah, I see yeah, your point. D-Boys, yes. I I think the matchup. I think DK can give them a fits and yeah, but, but, yeah, but bits no. over here. DK, I think will be close. Like, like DK will likely win those games, but it'll be close. But I, I, I never see Maniacs being close to Monsters at any point. Like it just, no. it's not what Maniacs do well. Um, Maniacs and, need the size advantage. They, and don't, they don't have that. Yeah, they don't have. They don't, and they don't have the. They don't have the. Uh, the offensive proficiency to go toe to toe. So they're not in the penthouse. They're in the uh, economy section of the no, division. They're just a playboy. You're talking about Maniacs being a playboy. Division two. We'll I'm, very, to D2. I'm very impressed with BIOB. Thirty three and I I we all know that Matrene is a good quarterback. Mm-hmm. He's able to win in Division Two, but last winter it was terrible. The odd the the whole thing, the whole team last winter was not good. And we kinda all brushed him aside saying, Yeah, he might be washed up for Division Two and he's playing the lights out this season. How shocked are you by Waste You losing again? Very to, as Club Legion. Very it, but is that credit to S Club Legion or I, I, to well, Waste So here's the thing: we all know S Club Le- Legion is going to be good, right? Oh, yeah, they're going to be dominant. They're, they're going to be likely a Division One team by next winter. You know what, boys? That's right? the first time you guys that keep fair? praise on well, a CIS team. No, it's yeah. not true. No, but what about we just react to things we see and don't make it up in our heads? But do you and don't go back on what we said, Mocha. And Mo, it's U Sports, not CIS. Yeah, seriously. I know. But do you How think do you I'm trying to dumb down for these guys here? They didn't care for U Sports. But do you think that James Gouda is a Division One quarterback? That that's borderline. Just, that's a surprising story to me. Is that James Gray was able to score so many points in the on Waste Waste Suit is a talented roster all around, not mm-hmm. just offensively. And James Gray could not was not that good last season in lower divisions. Now he's he turns the ball over too much. He does have like, ridiculous players around him. Yeah, um, I, I, like l- let them do the work for you in the sense like for I'm sure he's for trying sure, to 100%. do too much and he's turning the ball over for that reason. I. Uh, we PO against uh, Clockwork was a fun game to watch. It was a good defense. It was a good defense still made early on here. Both teams having early turnovers, couldn't score in the first Acor- ten minutes of the game. According to somebody that we won't name, uh, the referees stole the game from them. No, uh, that no, I know, I, I know what they're referring to. Well, can you describe it for the people at home? Who weren't there? It's our job. It was, you know. <laughs> Look how nervous he is right now. Look how he's no, uh, uncomfortable. I'm with trying to think of the play, and I think it's the play that. There was two plays. There was two plays, and one of them, I believe, was a, a non-call of a touchdown that was called a touchdown. Okay. And so... Were you there, McClane? Yeah, it was. And, and one of the players, uh, Zach, Zach Jonah, won an explanation from the referee afterwards. Like, the position of the body compared to where the feet are and the ball is at the goal line. Mm-hmm. And there was that play that may have turned it, but regardless of that or not, I just thought Vinny Galano missed his chances on the mistakes that uh, clockwork committed in the first I'm, half and he got stalled team. deep in his own territory and couldn't move the ball like it's, it doesn't and it was like a really that. good <laughs> really good defensive battle it's slug fast until in the second half when they finally started scoring points are you surprised that Vinny Galano turned the ball over twice I am not I am I am because he doesn't like it's regardless of the defense he doesn't take chances it's he usually not what Vinny does usually he, he'll lose because he doesn't take enough chances yep. not that he loses often but when yeah. he loses that's the reason and and I'm I'm surprised by this. I'm surprised that he they got intercepted twice. But you know what? A, a, a guy like AJ Gomes, right? New addition to Clockwork. I believe it's that pronounced AJ Gomez. Gomez. Yeah. I <laughs> one INT <laughs> pick six, yeah. two touchdowns. So he had three touchdowns combined, and he single handedly beat WePO. I, I think WePO will look at this. Well, single handedly, please. Well, he scored three touchdowns. Simon. Okay, but he's not the one throwing the ball. Look who's throwing the ball, and look at his stats: Mark Masiotra, sixteen and thirty-two for one sixty. It's all but, right. they, but they won. Yeah, but that pick six changed the game's uh, outlook and how it played out. But when was the pick six? It was in the early part of the second half. 
what was the score? Do you remember? I don't remember the score. Why is this across? Yeah, the no, but like, yeah. no, but I'm saying like <laughs> it's like a real like. No, but what I'm saying like what's the, a you know, sheriff over if, here? You, if you look at the top, like if you look at the final score, you say, oh, they won by a score, they won by a pick six, but it doesn't mean the pick six was the difference maker. But but they won by five. But Mo's being Mo was there, and he's telling you that. Okay, was the but maker. if you're de- let's say if you're if you get the ball back at the end, let's say you get five plays, you're down by one, and you score, that's the difference maker. But in this style of game, in the context of the game, how it was, there wasn't going to be, hey, we're going to go score for score. The points were at a premium in these between these two teams. Okay. Let's get back here, on now. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. No, no, no. We're yeah, going to on soon. We'll get them on soon, though. Uh, look, guys, D-Boys, what is wrong with this team here? I thought they, they would have got out of the funk against DK. Um, only 65 points for, which is one of the lowest among the top four teams in Division One. Is it a matter of developing the chemistry? Okay, well, is Marco, they, and we been, spoke about it, and we'll get into details, but we spoke about Marco Masiotra. Is he regressing as a quarterback? What We've, we've talked about this for the past two weeks now. But it, it looks like it's the it's, same thing, though. Like, what's wrong with the team? No, I think it's just a matter of, like, it's not chemistry. It's just, D-Boys had a rough start last season also. They had a rough start there's last a little winter bit also. Of, there's a little bit of complacency in that they kind of, and, and to be honest, this is the kind of thing that will bite them sooner than later um that they know that oh, we're gonna make the finals anyway like who cares like, we're gonna make the, the we're gonna make the semifinals anyways minimum yeah yeah but, but either way like, like yeah they, they i mean do, they act like well, they're top do you do you think that they think they're not going to the finals at any point no no i feel like they play like they're the the second team right behind the finest yeah. and we're gonna make it so there like against they, the finest they, 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 they literally matter. play these games like they don't matter but in my opinion the way the division's going around, mm-hmm. there's a chance they might, they might be knocked out of the top four, and have a, and play the finest in the quarterfinals instead of playing the finest. Yeah, the highest in the finals. versus the lowest remaining seed, but, but, I mean, look, you said a point before. Slow starters out of the gate. They've done that the last few years yep. under the D boys' name. Yep, and they've come on strong. We spoke about McLaren not being there, and the dishes of Quay Johnson and Jordan Alexi. Who yep, I think with time we'll get Jordan more. Jordan's playing really, really. Yeah, well. and they'll get more comfortable, right? But. I just think the office is, is lacking the creativity. And, again, I don't think Theo is as dominant now. I'm not, he's still dominant, but I'm saying right now, like, in producing the yards and touchdowns I, required. I think that's just a matter of the Marco-Theo connection. Yeah, the, I think that's missing right the now. The play that they everybody knows that deep into Theo on third downs has always been their bread and butter. Yes. And it, they're not using it right now. So if you take that away, the D-Boys offense is different. So let me ask you this question, gentlemen. If you were to pull the seven other captains in Division One, would they take Rod Mashtub over Marco Masiocha in the quarterback rankings this season? Or yeah, moving forward? let's just say the last, let's say a sample of the last year and a half. I, I I don't think they would, but I don't think it's a ridiculous statement as it would have been three years ago. So right now, what, you gentlemen, right now this eighteen month sample, who are you taking as a better I would quarterback say right now? not yet, but maybe by season's end. Peace. I'm inclined to agree, and I don't know if we're do, if we're doing the thing that we're just giving Marco Masio to credit because, because we recognize of his the name. name. Because, um, because even as a two-way player, Rob is if he's not as good, he's right there. Yeah, uh, Rob Mashtub. Sorry, Fair. I'm doing the, your thing where you don't say the names. Um, but um, do you think that, do you ahead. think Rod Mashtub is Hall of Fame eligible? Uh, not el- he is eligible, but do you think he's Hall of Fame worthy? I need so that was a question posed to me in in one of our many chat groups that we have. We have too uh, many. We need, to, we need to consolidate some chat yes. groups. But um, one of the things I thought it was, and I haven't had the chance to look at the numbers yet. Has he had ten Hall of Fame seasons yet? Has he had ten Hall of Fame seasons? Hall of Fame worthy seasons. To me, and that that's so because the early part of his career he was not very good. So you're saying he's not a first oh, ballot I, Hall of Famer then? I don't know. I, I, I don't have. Done, I haven't done the research. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying that I don't know. I, I'm just posing it as a question to you guys. And GM GM can maybe provide some of that insight. Does he? He has not. It's, okay. it's, okay. I think he's on his way <laughs> to be the Hall of Famer. So, he may not be first ballot. I, oh, I, I think it's without a doubt he will be. But I I I think if you we need to examine it, we need to see is this is this ten seasons worth of Hall of Fame caliber play to me if we would inaugurate the hall of fame at the end of the season it might influence a lot of votes saying if he's remains this dominant in division one and he's on track to win qb of the year in division one if he does and if that does happen then it 
it might sway a lot of votes this way, saying he, he, he came from Division 4, Division and 5. That's luckily why we don't do the votes at the, but, like at the end yeah, of the season. Exactly. But because of that, there's a chance that it's going to be next year when we see what happened at the end of this season and possibly what he can do this spring. But again, so, so by next, by pedigree, next right? season, he will have a, a played this season. He'll have played the, the summer and the fall. And by yep. that point... That's three more seasons. Well, if he, he plays all three it. seasons, but I'm saying it's yes, like, he can play three more seasons to make his case. But yeah, the fact that he's been moving up impresses a lot of people. The fact that he's still very dominant as he moves up is very and impressive. To me, well, to me, I remember him as a bad Division Five quarterback. Yes, I remember a bad one. I remember talking about Monstars, a great athlete, bad quarterback, and saying the right. quarterback was the issue yeah. in Division Four a while. When back. I used to watch the weekly Extra Point Live, yeah. I remember Mokan asking questions like, "Oh, but can they win despite Mashtub?" And the way Mokan asked, is, "Is he is he sneaky bad?" <laughs> and, and so quite bad over there. Yeah. Quite, yeah. Yeah. quite was, bad. But like to his credit, I don't think anyone's worked harder than him to get. This level, but well, it's funny. Both of them had script. both of them had the same trajectory. He's the trajectory. best player on Monsters now. Yeah, but you know what? Both of them had the same trajectory, right? They started from lower divisions. Who, Marco? Yeah, Marco and, and, and Rod, right? And they've worked their way up to Division One. Well, Marco also started Division because he started as a receiver. Yeah, Marco was brought in to replace Mark Champagne yeah. on on D Boys. D Boys, that's right. Because Mark Champagne won D Boy title. Yeah, I think th- I think the Lannies had said like, "Oh, he'll he'll be the next great thing," and everyone laughed at them, and. Look what happened! And yeah. They were right. He had a bit of Ryan Leaf uh, meltdown sometimes. We should, we should no, it's, it's isn't it the the opposite of the Ryan Leaf? Is that you have low expectations and then you blow them out of the well, water? Well, I remember he got angry at me one time. He got angry at one time. I was laughing at a joke on the sidelines, and he told me, "Yo, fuck off, man!" I'm like, Who "Yeah, are Mar- you? Mar- Marco had some anger issues." Yeah, Ryan <laughs> Leaf. <laughs> 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 uh, DK Rising right now, the big one over the Rainmakers. Now they will face Top Guns, Maniacs, Got Skills in the next three games. Was Could this be the seam of success that they are looking for before they'll face Braves, Monsters, Flag, Mossack, and finance in the last four games of the year? This need to be the seam of success that they need. They need to win these four next games. They can't afford to go like two and two. If they want to go back into the top four teams and have, a, let's say, easy first matchup in the playoffs, they need to win these four games and get back. Because right now they're one and two. So like, yeah. so like they're playing Top Guns, who are essentially, in my opinion, a Division Three team. Fair. Um, they go on to play God Skills, which it's a match if it can go either way. DK is probably favored. DK favored over Ma- over <laughs> Maniacs 2.0. Yeah. So I mean, it's not unrealistic. It's not unrealistic belief that they'll go three and in the next three games. But I, I feel they further further. Ha- you think they have to? No they, the the way this team plays and the, the sort of attitude and swagger they play with, they need to start winning because it's getting bad. They they're looking at Rajdi had one bad throw. Uh, to I believe was Serge Pilon. Uh, it was, like, he ran a slant. It was slightly behind him, and he, he gave him the look like, "Come on, man! Like it's an easy pass." Yeah. If you miss one, like they were up like thirty eight to like twenty five. It didn't matter. You missed one pass on a first down. It doesn't matter. But the fact that he he was disappointed with him concerns me a little bit. So, um, having been a former DK player, the the season that I played successful with, one by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there was one season where we had made it to the playoffs. It was the first round of the playoffs. We were playing Le Loft, which are essentially like a hybrid form of Maniacs 2.0. And <clears throat> Alex, at the, at the end of the first half, goes to, to Rashidi to complain, hey, I'm open, throw me the ball. I was open on that pass. Rashidi had zero incompletions that game. He had zero incompletions, and they were still going into the huddle and saying, hey, get us the ball. So... To a certain extent, I don't know if you'll always please those high expectations, even with oh. like Roshki playing a perfect game. I, I don't, I don't, I don't and, and 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 like GM, you and I are former teammates of Roshki. Is there anybody who's more equipped to pretend to listen to people in the huddle than <laughs> <laughs> Roshki even advocated? He'd, he'd be like, okay, yes, 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 whatever, and then call his own play and do whatever he wants because yeah, but he knows what he's doing. But that's the thing is he's he's got enough confidence in his own play calling and his ability. He's wired. To, he's to not know. He, like you can literally say anything. Like like Rajdi, give me the ball now. I'm gonna. He's he sexed your mom. And he's he also like all right, whatever. He's like, also like one of the most decorated player in FBF next I, to Kevin White. I, I agree. P- but, P- but that's what I'm saying. Because of that, he has the confidence. That I don't think it even matters. Winning two championship used to be named the Rajdi. I mean, you started by you, you started by disagreeing with us. No, no, no. You're, you're no, no, I'm saying, I don't know what I'm here. not saying Roger's a problem. I'm just saying like that the way this team is built, they need to start winning because the guys are kind of knocking on each other. That's what I'm saying. So they need to start winning to get back to that groove where, okay, my, fine, whatever, we might drop one game, it doesn't matter anymore. 
rather than being that one and two situation where losing a game actually does hurt your chances. That's it. The, the last four games, Monsters, Flag on the Sack, Braves, Montreal Spaniards. Tough. Before really you go to Matt Kirouac, um, Pilon Brothers, Nicholas Arsenal, um, the trio receiving that they are, where do you rank them amo- amongst the Div 1 trios? Are they the top or are they the second best behind the finest guys, behind the D-Boys, above the D-Boys, ahead of the Monster guys? I don't, I don't know. Wait, wait. Did you say Every, most underrated? Where do you no. rank them? Where do you rank them? Pilon Brothers and Nicholas Arsenal um, as a trio. Like, well, I, they've had some good numbers. So these guys would be, they'll be number one. They're, they're the best trio in Division One. Yeah. If you if you give these guys Kevin White as a quarterback, they will never lose a game. Yeah, I, like like it's close enough anyway that it does, I don't think. Yeah. It yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise, but you're having Chihol- uh, yeah, Pat, Pat, Pat Jerome, Jerome McKenna Moore, Moore and like uh, Adam Bailey, which is also fantastic. Yeah. But I feel like th- this this is a bit better, so it kind of balances everything out. But um, I like these. They are the guys who work best with Rush to the system. They're the guys who best fit what he does. Right. He also uses the pilon speed the, the best. Yeah. Coming up next, Matt Kerak, the conductor. On the Sportira guest line are brought to you by Sportira, the official suppliers of FPF uniforms and jerseys, as well as the home to the Sportira cage. Are you not getting your stats because your jersey is so beat up that the scorekeeper can't read your number? Don't be that guy on the Flag Plus football wall. We all know who you are. And get yourself or your team a fresh new look today by emailing info at sportira.com for quotes and details. Welcome back here to Call the Audible. And hey. now with us is the conductor hey, himself, Matt, Matt Kerouac. Matty, how you been, sir? Good, Moesha. How you doing? I am well. <laughs> I, I, Mo predicted that yeah. before the show. We talked about he it. He predicted? Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my best it's prediction. The, it's the only prediction he's ever yeah, gotten right. Ever gotten, you're, gotten you're predictable, right. Matt. Okay, Simon. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I know, Matt. It's, it's way past your bedtime, but we'll, we'll make this quick for you. Um, sure. That's what he tells his wife every night. <laughs> yes, I mean, <laughs> gotta run those rails tomorrow. I, I I would come back with something, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Poke the bear now, uh, Matty. Let's th- let's talk about the D boys right now and. Uh, like I know history has shown you guys have had slow starts, but does it feel any different this year with the adjustment of new players onto the roster and the offense not being as dominant as they have been in years past? Um, honestly, at the beginning, well, when the let's say beginning of June, um, for behind the scenes, I'm sure some of you knew that we were having problems finding guys. And then out of nowhere, everybody came together and we ended up picking up Jord- uh, Jordan and... Quaid and it brought us together more so than I've ever seen the D boys together. And I feel like that's going to drive us forward, hopefully to a championship, but we'll see. Um, slow starts. Yeah. Marco's been a little off. I think it's cause he's engaged now, but yeah, that's we, just my opinion. We discussed the marriage effect when we did the division yeah. four podcast. Uh, Matt, um, we heard last week how Marco Masiota described CLR forces. How do you describe them? I agree wholeheartedly with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see that going that way. But Thank okay. you very much, Mac. You're right. No, of course. <laughs> nice. I, I, it's been a long time coming for, for me. Just I've hated them since I've met them. Uh, I met them in an outdoor tournament when I was playing with the finest. And the classic Fred Dupree, Bain Wee touchdown dance that he does, I, I can't stand it. So... Isn't it your favorite thing in the world? It just like fist up and walks away. Yeah, and then and he says fist up, bang we, and screams it. And yeah, no, it's, no. Um, we see, we've seen Braves doing well and losing just by a point in Division One. But why, in your opinion, are Braves 2.0 struggling so much? I don't one? know. I don't <laughs> right. understand it. Analysis of Magic Eric. <laughs> no, but I don't know. I, I honestly, it doesn't make sense. I was even speaking to Dan Lazera and. He, he said, he said something about the Braves, and he goes, bah, they're shit. Okay. But I don't understand how. Is, yeah, is, is it not the same team as the D1 team? Uh, Pretty they're much. They're missing some guys, though. Yeah, you keep roster. saying that. Who? No, 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 but, no, but they are. <laughs> they are. It's five, the same five guys, Jason, mm-hmm. Josh Gagipi. Uh, they Mike have Piazza, Gary Epi. So they, they have five legitimate D1 uh, players with the same quarterback. But, but the that pro- sixth guy. And, but the and problem they, is that they win a whole guy, tournament with five guys? That's Yes. 
But that sixth guy looks like. Well, anyways, it's not never the same guy. But that sixth guy looks like a five player, and he's being picked on constantly. Okay. That, Enough that to lose to every I game. Has worked for them in the also, past. also <laughs> the quarterback has not been playing well in Division Two for some reason. He needs to stop throwing to the fifth guy. <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, sorry, um, Matty. Matt. When Matt, yeah, when does go. Dan Lazar become the next quarterback of D Boys? When does he? I don't know. When Marco gets married? <laughs> so when is later, later this year? <laughs> is Marco getting married? I think this he got pushed. I think he got pushed to twenty twenty. Uh, I think he got pushed uh, to twenty. He's, he's got some time. He's got a few more good years left. Uh, uh, Matty, yeah. when you look at but, Division Two, and you see. Hashtag NR, Clockwork, and BYOB as your top three undefeated teams right now. How surprised are you with those three guys being on top? Well, I'm one of them, Mo. Thank you. I know. So not surprised. Um, hashtag NR, not really. I mean, Corey's a stud, and the team's getting better every year. BYOB, that's Matsu Rene's team? Yes, yeah. correct. Yes. That's, I'm, I'm a little surprised with them. I mean, Matsu Rene's teams usually do well. And then crumble in the end, first round playoffs or whatever it is. So, I mean, it's still early, Mo. So, you and your predictions, who's going to win a championship? I don't want to hear it. Who's going to win a championship in Div 2? I'm looking at STL. Clockwork. I'm not going to pull a GM and not save my own team. I said STL. <laughs> That's fair. We just beat STL. So, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Mo, I'm not, I'm not going to be a. I'm not going to be there for two weeks for Clockwork. I'm not going to tell you which weeks so people hear, but you want to sub in for us? This we'll is talk. a weird interview. <laughs> it we'll talk. A, it's actually a job just ki- just kidding. It was actually we'll a talk. Job. I'd rather play for Simon. How's, okay, <laughs> here's, here, how surprised are you by Waste Youth's start to the year? One and two. Many thought they would have been where you guys are at three and zero. Oh. Well, they should be in D one technically, but yeah, I'm really surprised, especially having played with Dan in in the cup in the spring or sorry in the fall. Um. Yeah, I don't know what's up with them. Do you lose? Are you disappointed by the fact that they didn't stay up in Div One, given that they beat the Finals last year and, and were very competitive in most games? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then speaking to them last week, a couple of them, they all they said to me was, "Wow, ah, that was fluke." <laughs> it's, it's, that it's was really their nice response. To see that level of belief in oneself, right? Yeah, <laughs> self confidence is a Matt. So one of the things I was most surprised about as as I, I uh, started to get to know you is that you're a father. Um, what are the, <laughs> a, two. a father a two. of two of two children now? But uh, mm. what are the things where you look at like your life now and that are the greatest surprise as compared to your pre fatherhood days? I can't say those things on air. The things you can't <laughs> say. <laughs> Don't worry, no one's listening to this podcast. Not right now, but maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I know Marco will be seeing his replacement if I did well or not. I can't get as drunk as him because I have kids to watch. But that's fair. But yeah, Eagle disagrees with that. I have one name for Matt for his uh, pre-fatherhood days: Gary mm. Gilliam. <laughs> uh, did I, I tell you about that? Guard for the uh, San Francisco nope. 49ers. Yeah. Formerly of the San Francisco now Seahawks. Yeah. yeah. Did I tell you about that, GM? I don't think I hear you. I don't have headphones on right now. Yeah, you can. Oh, he doesn't have headphones. Oh, he asked if he told you about that. (laughs) Clearly, if I'm bringing it up. Yeah. Um, Uh, Once again, I can't say these things on air. Why (laughs) not? There's only one. There's only one. You know what? Here, here, Matt. Just say he's my he's my brother in in an Eskimo way. That's awesome. Okay, Matt. (laughs) Matt, can you can you give us like a like a baseline? Did you watch the surface of what happened that night? Sex. That no, no, night. No. I mean, I, I mean, Mo. I know you don't understand the concepts here. But it was. It was actually on a trip with Antonio Lani and Marco Masiotra in the Dominican Republic. So it was more than one night. Put it to you that way. There you go. Okay. There you Who go. came up the MVP? And there was a lot of sand. Who was the MVP of that trip? Can we kill him? That him? trip? Yeah. Um. Nobody, you know. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> so it wasn't you then? No, God, no. Okay, fair enough. Matt, can you explain to me why Terror Squad can't win games? Best team picture, though. Yeah. Eagle, if you bring that on the screen. It's so original. They do it every year. But oh, you, but you yeah, guys, first time I've seen you guys, you guys yeah. played them week one, and it was close. Yeah. And Marco yeah. told me after the game, like they're good. They're going to be good, and they still haven't won a game. Um, I think Tam's still off a bit. He, he likes to run around the pocket, and he, he's 
trusting his arm a little bit too much, and I don't think he's got the strongest of arms, and he's not that accurate. He he had the chance to win the game against us, and he just kept overthrowing Shenard and Hum. And I mean, they have a stack squad; they should be winning. Uh, I think it's just purely on on Tam. So 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 they will win. They won't. They will make the playoffs. Considering how can you not teams. make the playoffs? Well, two teams won't make it, so there's a chance. Well, granted, CLR yeah. won't. CLR is going to be one of them. Who's the other one? Braves 2.0, so with, with Ice. Ice. Ooh. Um, Glads, maybe? Wolverines? No. Wolverines. That's what I'm saying. Wolverines. Oh, yeah. Even Past with Miles Gibbon? Prime. Is it Miles Gibbon the quarterback? Tony's yeah. not their quarterback? No, Tony's playing receiver now. <laughs> they're definitely not making it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matty, we'll get you out on this here. Um... When you look ahead now for Division One, Division Two, which has been the best division so far after three weeks of competition? Um, honestly, I, I'd like. I think a lot of people are a little uh, freaked out by the fourteen team Div Two, but uh, I like it. I like the level of competition in it, and I like how you guys mentioned it that the schedule is random and every team is playing each other more or less. Obviously, there's four teams, teams you're not going to play, yeah. but. I like the competition in Div 2 more so than in Div 1, even though this is the most teams we've seen in Div 1. Um, I still like Div 2 right now. All right, Manny. Head over to the caboose and get your sleep, my man. You have to wake up early tomorrow for your shift. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. You're right. Thanks, Mo. Anytime. <laughs> thanks, guys. Later, man. Sure. Okay, bye. He's playing. What the hell is wrong with this idiot? Like yes. Sleep. Yes. Uh, guys, we're talking about the 0-4 records in, in Division 2. Uh, just wrap up this segment here. You have Terror Squad, Glads, Braves, well, Sir with Ice, and CLR. All winless so far. Okay, winless, yes. Winless, right? So we know 12 make it to the playoffs. So three out of the five will make it to the playoffs. So who are the two right now that you think are on the outside looking in? I mean, Terror Squad have two ties. Can but that that, that might help already? them. It might hurt them, though, because of the wins, right? Well, if 12 out of 14 make it, it's going to help them. But, I mean... Can can you stop with the ties already? So who may, who who's the two that's going to be on the outside looking in? I I disagree with Matt saying Wolverines won't make the playoffs. Uh, I think they will. I think they're going to be a better team moving forward. Uh, I'm going with uh, CLR and Serve with Ice. Yes, GM. So it took almost four hours for it to happen, but we have a write-in. Oh, oh boy! Awesome. Um, Kevin Manzel? Kevin Wyeth says oh. D boys will be fine. Wait till they get on the same page with the new guys. Oh, okay. Okay. Stop Sage being words. diplomatic. Okay. Seriously, Kev. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Like, if this is Keyshawn, he'd be like, "Yo, who cares? I want, we'll see where we see in the finals." I want the Kevin Wyeth and what he says in the mirror rather than the Kevin Wyeth and what he says on the Facebook. Yeah, post. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I want the Kevin Wyeth when he talks to his wife in the morning about how we're evil towards the finals. I want that Kevin Wyeth, not this. I don't nice. think that's the conversation. He has with his yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's <laughs> not the conversation. <laughs> he has with his, wife. his I'm guaranteeing his wife doesn't care about Oh, this. she cares about this podcast. No, I think she does. She but really not, cares. not about Mokan, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Oh, really? she cares. Well, she probably cares about Montreal's fans. They watch the family. The wives watch this podcast. Okay, so as you're saying before, with this uh, right good. now, you picking CLR and who? I'm saying CLR and serve with ice. I, without JD Chavadi with playing for serve with ice, uh, he played week one. It looked like he got injured, stopped playing, hasn't played since. They're simply not the same team. Peace. Uh, two teams out of the five from Division Two who are winless. Who do you think will not make it? Um, I, I have to believe Braves 2.0 are going to figure it out at some point. Um, just they're, they're I mean, they're going to win. Good. Like they're going to win a few games at least. Yes. You know? Yeah. And 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 uh, Serve with Ice have given me no reason for confidence. But give me Glads instead okay. of CLR. Okay. Okay. I, can I, I, I do that every season, by the way. Yes. And I'm always wrong. Absolutely. And instead of changing my opinion, but, but I'm just going to be crazy and do the same thing over and over again. Glad's defense is just absent. But the, they the, no when defense. have they ever they had defense? But, but then again, Frank Lebeau doesn't need a defense because he puts up so many points every week. Yeah. Just He doesn't win somehow. But Finally, defensive play of the year is a wrap-up for Serge Pilon Jr. Yes. Three like pick the, sixes. Yes. Can we give it to him now? Yeah, 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 I if we could have, if I had the trophy, I put his name on it already. Three pick sixes, four ints, three PDs, four ints, and it's only been three weeks. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's a pick six. He has a pick six per week. Yeah, I mean, at some point. What? I agree. Okay. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> I was like, what do you got to say here? I was getting ready for something else. <laughs> oh. Go ahead. Games of the week. Thank you. I was gonna say, uh, Serge Pilon has more pick sixes in a season than this room has in a career. No, actually, I was thrown one. one. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'm good at that. 
Games of the Week, GM. So I, yeah, yeah, nice try. Me. Pulling me down. <laughs> so, started off, Monstars, Montreal's finest. This is awesome. It's a good game of Sunday. Lachine, I have the finest winning by two. I want to pick Monsters so they bad. They beat them. They beat them. Do it. I know. I do it. So, it's finest do struggle against teams they've never seen before. Like, but they have seen them, though. So but that, do not it this Monster specifically. Like, they've I mean, seen Rob Mastro before. Yeah, but not... Not this yeah, current roster because this is a better roster than the way Rob that. plays. With McLaren, who has always had the finest number, by the way. Jordan McLaren. Oh, yeah? Is. yeah. He's yeah, always had good games against the finest. Um, I don't know. G- I said g- finest by fine, two. Fine, give me monsters. Give me monsters by three extra points. Yeah. I won't pick because it's in my heart. But okay. I think Kevin, Kevin White will have more extra points, but Rob Ashton will throw more touchdowns. One more okay. touchdown? Yeah. So Next. seven to six. Top okay. Guns, DK. DK. DK because, again, Top Guns looks. Look like a Division Three team. Next, Rainmakers got skills. Got skills. I mean, Rainmakers uh, needs to win at some point. Yeah, this, this is game. the kind of game they, they can win. This Rain, is it, but they're not going to do it. Rainmakers needs to win because if they go zero and four, maybe zero and five, the guys are going to give up. They make brain today. Rainmakers. Dip two. STL hashtag NR, which will likely be the game of the week. Yeah, I'm thinking STL in this game. Should be game of the week. Someone's yeah. got to wear pennies in that game. Both are great, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Is Serge Pinot going to have a fourth pick six? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't want to take a stand. I, I don't travel through time. I'd rather talk about things that happened than cool. things I don't know about. So that's why you're picking game of the week? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, he got you me, there. Give me, give me hashtag NR. Um, served with ice against Gladiator. Because of the thing I said before, <laughs> <laughs> give me some extra with ice. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go glads. I'll go glads in this one. Oh, oh, oh this is this is a fun one right here. You can sit with us against Clockwork. Liam and Marco go head to head. Uh, by the way, Marco was Liam's backup in high school basketball. Uh, someone's got to wear pennies in that game, I believe, because both are gray. Give me, you can't sir, sit with us. Sit, sit with, with us. us. Sit. Sit with sir us. With the us? thing you yeah, can't. Yeah. The thing you cannot do with them, Mohan. Yeah. Um. Marco is dedicating his life from this point forward to clean living. He's doing the program. Uh, he's cleaning <laughs> up. I think that we That's why he's not on anymore. We'll see the best version. He's on one week suspension from FPF. Um, we're going to see uh, the better version of Marco from here on out. FPF podcast, uh, not FPF games. Yeah, why, because, no, because yeah, yeah, what no, will yeah, inevitably yeah. happen is after this week I of games, we're gonna get an angry like miss uh, like anonymous letter saying, "Hey, I thought you said Marco was suspended. He played in his game. We should have won thirty nothing for like Bradley Boue or something." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, bro, what's going on here? Also, I don't have stats. But no, I think I think uh, the first three weeks for Marco Masiocha have become basically the FPF preseason. Yeah. So I think I think this is right around when we start to see the good Marco Masiocha. So, so put him in your fantasy lineup this week. Mm-hmm. I mean, also, Clockwork hasn't lost a game yet. Yeah, and, and like that's the thing is, we're like, oh, you know, D-Boys are finished. Uh, we're saying yeah, Marco is not playing well. lost one game in two, two divisions. No, we're also saying, <laughs> oh, uh, Marco's not playing well, but they haven't lost yet. All right, Correct. then, match your words, please. Uh, s- What's the oh. random city mall? That's, a man. <laughs> That's, That's my magic words tonight. Mo, well, from all the cities in the world, choose one to talk about. Good night, Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, I guess so. Used to have a crazy coach with the Pirates. Mike Leach. So, yeah, man. Like, my final transfers get longer. Well, who's your favorite Pirate? We're off air. 